Hi guys, welcome back to another video on Surface Fabric. In this video, we're gonna take a quick step back from our coding, and we're gonna look at a more theoretical approach to how Surface Fabric uses stateful services. So we're gonna be particularly concerned with how Surface Fabric stores state in our stateful services, and also how Service Fabric manages partitioning of our stateful services. And we're going to look at a couple of examples of this. So we're going to start off by looking at a single partitioned service, and then we're going to look at a named partition service. And finally, we're going to look at a numerical partition service. So our diagram here represents our five node Service Fabric cluster. So we have five nodes. We have one, two, three, four, and five. And Service Fabric will put our different services on these different nodes and try to distribute the load and the state between all five nodes to achieve the highest levels of availability and reliability. So in this example, say we have a new service and we will just call it for now, we'll just call it first service. And as we saw in previous videos, the configuration for this service is defined in the application and service manifests. So this service has a single partition and the service also has a target replica factor of three. So how will Service Fabric deploy this to our cluster? Service Fabric will deploy three instances of this service because there is a single partition and three replicas. So the number of deployed instances is the number of partitions multiplied by the number of replicas and Service Fabric will choose to place these on the most appropriate nodes. So in our case, we may have one deployed on node one, an instance deployed on node four, and an instance deployed on node three. And one of these instances will be our primary instance, and the other will be our secondary instances or secondary replicas. So when we are writing to the state of our stateful service, we write to the primary instance. And this then gets replicated to our secondary instances. And when we get a response saying the write has been successful by a quorum of replicas, as determined by the Paxos algorithms, we can say that this write has been successful. And Service Fabric is constantly monitoring our service to make sure the primary partition is available and also the secondary replicas. If Service Fabric detects that the primary replica is not available, it will change one of the secondary or active secondary replicas to become the primary, and it will boot up a new secondary replica on an available node. And also if Service Fabric detects that one of the secondary replicas goes down, it will boot up a new secondary replica again on an available node. So for instance, if node number one does not become available, Service Fabric will promote, say for instance, the replica running on node three to a primary instance, and then we'll boot up a new replica on an available node, in this case, node five, where we will boot up a, what will be originally an idle secondary, and we'll start streaming state from the other replicas of this service, and then we'll eventually become an active secondary, ready to handle writes and become a primary if required. So that's it for a single partitioned stateful service with three replicas. A more complicated example, which we'll look at now, is how does service fabric handle named partitions? So in this case, our service will have three named partitions. And each partition will have three replicas. So again, we apply the same logic as before to figure out how many instances we have. And it's the number of partitions multiplied by the number of replicas, which means we will have nine instances of our service running in our cluster. And our named partitions will be based on regions of the world. So we'll have a region for the EU, for the USA, and for Japan. So how will Service Fabric run these instances in our cluster? Again, Service Fabric will distribute these instances throughout the cluster to achieve the highest level of availability and reliability. So the first node might have an instance of the EU partition, the second node might also have an instance of the EU partition. And the fifth node will have this. And Service Fabric will decide which are the most appropriate nodes to have this data. One of the partitions will be the primary replica, and the other two will be secondary replicas. And again, we have three instances because we have three replicas. 
and service fabric will do the same for USA. So we have the primary replica for USA on node three, the secondary replica on node four, and the other secondary replica on node two. And again, the same for Japan. We'll have the primary replica on node five, and secondary replicas on node one and node three. And these replicas for the specific regions will be fully responsible for handling and storing all the data for that partition. And this will be done using the partition key. So services will be called using the partition key, either EU, USA, or Japan. And the data relevant for that partition key will only be stored on the nodes of that partition. And this allows us to split the load across our cluster. So instead of having one service that's responsible for handling all requests and one service that's responsible for storing all the data, we've split that across multiple instances of the service. This means that no one node is overloaded with requests and data storage. For instance, if we have a single partition, the primary might be running on node one, and that would be responsible for handling all requests and all data for that whole service. And this might lead to node one consuming a lot of resources and slowing down. But in this case, we're splitting all the requests between the different regions. So if we have partitioned correctly, and by partitioning correctly, I mean our partition key evenly splits our data. So assuming that we have an even number of customers from the EU, from the USA, and from Japan, our nodes will be handling one third of the load that they would be if the service was not partitioned. So we can also partition on numerical values. So to do this, we have to define three things. We have to define the partition count, the low key, and the high key. So again, we'll have a partition count of three. And in this instance, we will set our low key to zero and our high key to eight. By default, Service Fabric will use an in 64 range for low key and high key but we can overwrite this to use our own values. So when we're making a request to get data or send data to one of our partitions, we will define a number. And based off our low key, high key, and partition count, Service Fabric will choose what partition is the correct partition to route our request to. So we have our three partitions here, one, two, and three. And the number we request is based off the low key and the high key. So there are nine possible values that Service Fabric will range our service between zero, one, two, all the way up to eight. That's nine overall values. So if our request has a partition key of one, it will fall into the range of our first partition because that will handle zero, one, and two. The second partition will handle three, four and five, and the third partition will handle six, seven and eight. So when we send a request with partition key four, it will go to this partition. If we send it with two, it will go to this partition. And if we send one with six, seven or eight, and just say eight, it will go to this partition. So we can use this with a hashing algorithm to hash other values into the range between zero and eight. And if we do our hashing algorithm correctly, which will uniformly distribute our load, this can be an effective way of partitioning our service and balancing the load across our services. And just like named partitions, these partitions will be spread across our cluster with their primary and secondary replicas. So we have the primary for zero, one, and two here, secondary here, and our other secondary here, and the same for the other two. We might have our to our three, four, and five primary, our three, four, and five secondary, and our final secondary might be on this node. And finally, the exact same for the six, seven, and eight partition. Our secondary will be here. Our primary will be on this node. 
and we'll have another secondary on node five. And you can see how Service Fabric is trying to split the instances across our cluster. So we don't have too many instances running on one node and we don't have two replicas of the same partition on the same node. And also we are trying to minimize the number of primaries we have running on a single node. And again, all the same things that we looked at in the first example are true here. If node one was to go down, there'd be two things would happen. So for starters, our purple one, two and three partition would need a new primary and that would be taken by one of the secondaries. So on node two, and then we would spin up another secondary. So zero, one, two, a secondary would spin up on another node, another available node. And in this case, it appears on node four, even though node three has less service instances running on it, it's not appropriate to spin up another secondary on that because there is already a secondary for a partition on that node. If we spun up another secondary here and node three went down, we would lose both our secondaries at once. And we also need to find a new secondary for node six, seven, eight. So the primary is still available for node six, seven, eight. So we don't need to change the primary, but we do need a new secondary to keep the target replica set size of three that we have to find. So six, seven, and eight will get another secondary instance of the partition on node three. So we've looked at different partitioning strategies and how Service Fabric spreads these partitions out across our cluster and what happens when various nodes go down and how Service Fabric keeps our partitions highly available. But one of the main advantages of partitioning in Service Fabric is to achieve a high level of scalability. So as we've seen, each partition will handle a unique subset of our data and it will handle requests for this data and also storing this data if we're using the inbuilt Service Fabric data stores. So this means that each partition is responsible for a small amount of the overall work that is done for our entire service. And one way we can create a highly scalable cluster is to have a partition count that's higher than the number of nodes on our cluster or the number of nodes that it is possible for this service to be deployed to. So in this case, we have a five node cluster and we might have a single service, a first service, and this service might have 10 partitions. And what Service Fabric will do is, again, it will try and spread our partitions throughout our cluster. So we'll try to do this in a balanced manner if possible. So in this ideal case, we'll have two primaries on each of the five nodes in our cluster. In a more real life scenario, we might have other services running on our cluster and there might be more resource contention and it mightn't be guaranteed that every node will have two primaries, but Service Fabric will do its best to achieve this. And we're assuming in this example that we partitioned in a very appropriate and correct manner. So each partition, because we are 10, is handling 10% of our load. So it might be split on customer ID or region or whatever, it doesn't matter. But in this ideal example, we've partitioned correctly and each node is handling 10%. And because there are 10 partitions, that means we're handling 100% of our load overall. And our company or our service has just started. So at the moment, we're not very popular and our nodes are only at say 30% capacity. So each node is handling the request for its partition, which is roughly 10% per partition. So this node here is handling 20% of the overall requests to our service, i.e. two 10% for each partition, which is leading to kind of a 30% uh, resource usage of our node. And we could say maybe that this 30% is made up of say 100 requests per second, 50 requests per second for each partition. But suddenly our service becomes very popular. So we shoot up from 100 requests per second to say 400 requests per second. And this is putting a lot of pressure on this node. This node is really struggling and every node, because we have partitioned successfully, the request rate has gone up significantly. So all of our nodes now, instead of being at 30% resource usage are up to 90%. And this is getting dangerous because our nodes may start slowing down, our requests might processing slowly, our transactions might start failing, and we might start losing customers. 
So to combat this, we have two options. We can either scale out or scale up our service. So to scale up, this would involve adding more resources to our nodes. So we might add more RAM or more CPU to each node, which should bring this figure down a bit, but is not the ideal solution. The other solution we can follow is scale out, which is basically adding more machines to our cluster. And this is often more efficient and cheaper. So in our example, we might add two new nodes to our clusters. So two new machines to our service fabric cluster. And Service Fabric will automatically see that these two nodes are on our cluster and will start to rebalance the load appropriately. So it will start to move primaries off the existing nodes and onto the new nodes. So we will have two new primaries on these nodes and these will start processing the requests for data for these partitions. So automatically, the number of requests to a primary for this node has fallen significantly as this node is picking up the slack. And this means that the resource contention, we should see this drop. So by adding these two nodes, we reduce the resource contention on node one and node three. In a more complicated service, we might see the partitions of other services move about as Service Fabric tries to redistribute the load. But we can also continue to scale up to 10 nodes. So we have another three nodes. Again, Service Fabric will try and balance our primary partitions. So we will move these partitions these instances to the other nodes, which will cause the resource contention on the previously existing nodes to drop as they're now only handling half of the requests. And so we can scale out to a maximum number of nodes that is our partition count, because if we scale out further, if we add an 11th node, we won't have any more primary partitions to place there. So we won't see as much benefit or any benefit. So it's important to define our partition count and our partition high and low key upfront because these cannot be changed once our service is running. In order to change these, we need to delete and redeploy our service. So if we have a service that we anticipate will need to handle a lot of load in the future, we might choose a high partition count, which will allow us to scale out effectively. If we have a service that we don't believe the load will increase much in the future, we might choose a lower partition count while still allowing for some scaling out because we don't want to choose very, very, very high partition counts because there is a resource cost in just running the partition. So if we have 60 partitions on a three node cluster, every node is running a large amount of primary and secondary replicas. There is some overhead just to running those primary and secondary replicas, even if they're not processing any data. So in this video, we looked at some of the theory on how we partition stateful services in Service Fabric and the benefits of how partitioning and how Service Fabric handles the multiple partitions and multiple replicas of each partition in situations such as nodes going down and scaling out our services. In the next couple of videos, we'll look at using this knowledge in communicating between stateful services and also using the Service Fabric reliable collections to reliably store data in our cluster, which is immune to node failures. So if you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel and like it for more Service Fabric content.